I'm Larry Walther, and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 6. In this module, we'll look at cash management and controls for receipts and disbursements. Thinking first about cash management, recognize that organizations must ensure that sufficient cash is always available to meet obligations as they come due, and second of all, that any available or excess or idle cash is appropriately invested to generate the best possible returns to the organization. Now, this will often require the preparation of a cash budget. Indeed, in a later chapter, considerable attention is given to the preparation of a cash budget. But for now, just recognize that it is an overall plan that depicts the cash inflows and outflows for a stated period of time. This enables, in advance, identifying periods of time when there may be a cash shortage, which could otherwise be seen as, as a signal of weakness and even do considerable damage to the organization. Uh, for example, uh, payroll must be met or employees will not continue to work for an organization. So proper cash management is very important. Now, you may think of a cash shortage as, as a sign of a weak organization. That's not always true. A very successful company may be having significant growth, which means that additional cash is needed to acquire inventories, or build up in receivables in advance of actually collecting cash, or even indeed building new locations, new facilities, acquiring new equipment. All of those things take considerable amounts of cash. So rapid growth can also oftentimes create a cash shortage. So careful planning is needed to sustain a proper growth rate. Now, strategies to enhance cash flows can be divided into, first, external strategies, such as issuing additional shares of stock. The advantage is that those are funds that are not required to be repaid. However, it definitely dilutes the existing ownership structure. And in many cases, that's something that the owners desire to avoid. And so that gives rise to consideration of borrowing funds that do not entail shareholder dilution. But those funds must be repaid along with interest charges on the funds. Some businesses will maintain a standing line of credit. A standing line of a credit is an agreement with a bank or other capable lender that says we have available to us upon our call or demand access to borrow funds. Now there's usually a significant fee for setting up a standby borrowing agreement or a letter of credit, but it's certainly less than the interest cost that would be incurred on actually borrowing the funds and then simply holding those funds. So that's a very, a very viable external strategy for having access to cash as needed. Internal strategies include accelerating cash collections. We saw in an earlier chapter the idea of offering a cash discount to our customers to entice them to pay on a timely basis. We might also accept credit cards that involve immediate uh, receipt or immediate funding of our sales from a credit card company or accepting electronic payments for customers that give us same-day access to funds that they transfer to us. On the, in the alternative, on the flip side, we might try to delay cash outflows, such as paying by check through the mail that may buy us a few days utilization of funds. However, recognizing that using the float in that way is not acceptable if you're using that to cover a cash shortage. In other words, you're not permitted to write hot checks. Uh, many people have found themselves in trouble for trying that idea for cash management. Now, along with uh, in internal strategies to accelerate cash receipts or defer cash payments, we also need to consider our cash controls, which simply means limiting access to our cash, providing appropriate segregation of duties so that the person dispersing the cash is not the one perhaps authorizing the disbursement, and other such accountability features. When we think about cash collections, if we have a business where we provide goods and services to customers and they pay us cash in hand, we need to think about auditing those cash, tying out the cash to our cash drawers and our receipts, as well as making daily bank deposits of those cash amounts. The same is true on, on receipts uh, of checks, that is sales on credits where we later collect a check from a customer. Those checks should be timely recorded in the accounting records. Uh, periodically, the actual deposit should be prepared to the bank, compared to the bank deposit slip. So we need an enhanced control structure over those types of items that's often evidenced through a, a, a bank reconciliation that we look at in the next module. Finally, we want to consider controls over disbursements, proper authorization of payments, proper separation of duties, preparation of bank reconciliations, perhaps utilization of a petty cash system that is in another module we will discuss, as well as use of checks for most significant payments that occur by the organization. So there are a number of strategies that we can entertain to control cash, manage cash, plan our cash activities, make sure that that asset remains a solid, uh, vibrant part of our organization.